Cardiogenic shock is the heart's fault. It's the heart's fault that we're in shock right now. Shock means that we cannot get enough blood and oxygen to all the tissues and cells in our body. Shock is hypoperfusion. It means I cannot perfuse and get blood and oxygen to all my cells. Cardiogenic shock is this. The heart cannot, can't pump blood to meet the demands of the body. This causes hypoperfusion, shock. And here's the big note with cardiogenic shock. Please remember this. Cardiogenic shock is not hypovolemic shock. Hypo hypovolemic shock is when we don't have enough volume of blood in our body. It's not that. There's plenty of blood in the body, but the heart is too weak or too hurt to pump it. Now I'm gonna go through right now, this is my one, two, three, four method. We first explain what it is, then we talk about risk factors, then we talk about signs and symptoms, and then we talk about how do we treat it. Why does this happen? How do we get cardiogenic shock? Remember, cardiogenic shock, it's the heart's fault. Well, there's really three main things that can be the heart's fault. One is a heart attack. If we have a heart attack, we have a blockage inside of one of our coronary arteries, we're not getting enough oxygen to the heart, the heart starts to die, there's muscle death, the heart gets too weak to pump, it's literally dying, the muscle's dying of the heart, it can't pump. Second thing is if we have heart failure, so one of the chambers of the heart, one of the sections of the heart is failing as a pump, so it's too weak and it can't pump blood like it should. The third one is what if we have like a lethal EKG rhythm where the heart is quivering and the heart's too weak because the electrical system of the heart is ineffective. That can cause cardiogenic shock. So these are the three things that actually cause this type of shock. Now these are clear cut signs and symptoms for cardiogenic shock. Remember the causes. So those main causes really sum up this right here. Hypotension. Well, obviously we're in hypoperfusion, so the blood is not pumping, it's we're in hypotension. Low blood pressure, rails. We're gonna hear it sound because the heart is failing, blood backs up to the lungs. JVD, remember that goes with heart failure, right? Increased respiratory rate, because we're having a hard time breathing, of course, and hypoxia, meaning our SpO2 is low, our oxygen levels are low. So we got a patient, the oxygen levels are low, the patient's breathing at a faster rate, they have chest pain, they have difficulty breathing, their blood pressure is low. Could there be nausea vomiting? Yes, of course. Again, one of the causes is heart attack. That's not on here, but that makes sense. What's the thing that's gonna clue you in on shock? Cold extremities with delayed cap refill, hypotension with these sign symptoms, that's cardiogenic shock. You ask someone you suspect with cardiogenic shock in your ambulance, now what do you do? So first, let's start down here. We're gonna give oxygen. We're gonna start an IV. We're gonna do cardiac monitoring, get an EKG, get a 12 with EKG. We're gonna do end tidal CO2 monitoring. We're gonna do SpO2 monitoring. Those are all the basics, okay? Now, where do we go from here? A few things. We gotta maintain blood pressure. That's the big key. Remember, they're hypotensive, they're in shock, they're hypo, hypo perfusing. We gotta get that blood pressure back up. That's the big point I'm gonna talk about in a moment. Then finally, rapid transport and you wanna alert the emergency department early, this is one of the most critical patients you're ever gonna see. They're in cardiogenic shock. The only next step is cardiac rest. So, one and two. We first need to improve the pump. The heart is failing. If we improve the pump, we fix the issue. So we do this by using vasopressors, right? Now, what vasopressor you use is gonna be determined on the protocol in your area. For example, vasopressors are like epi, like norepinephrine. It's always gonna be different depending on what your medical direction has, but that is the correct answer we're looking for is vasopressors that are gonna vasoconstrict and improve the blood pressure. And we give them via IV drip, drip it in slow. Manage the root cause. This is what we're gonna do. Why is the patient in cardiogenic shock? Because they're having a heart attack fix the blockage, we are good, right? So if it's CHF, we're gonna treat for CHF, the CHF pathway. If it's MI, we're gonna treat for the heart attack pathway. If it's EKG disturbance, can we fix the EKG? Then we fix the shock, you see? 
So this is how it works. And there it is. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school and how to pass NREMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the Video Vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the Video Vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description and I'll see you on the inside.